We are going to talk about why you don't want a tax refund and quite frankly, why tax refunds are bad. Hey y'all, so before I get this video started, let me give a quick shout out. These were the first three comments in my last video. If you want to be featured in my next video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and come show me some love when I drop a new video. What's up you guys, it's Key Amber Vaughn, AKA Coach Key, coming back to you with another video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and also tap the bell so that you are notified of every new video that I post. So as you guys can tell by the title of this video, we are going to be talking about why you do not want tax refunds, why tax refunds are bad, and how to fix the issue if you are getting large sums of money during tax time. So this is the perfect time to talk about this particular subject, why? Because well, it's tax season. And of course, every single tax season, there's a lot of hype around tax season. A lot of people are talking about what they're going to do with their refunds. Then you have people telling people what not to do with their refunds. Listen, I am not here to talk to you about what you should not do with your tax refund, but I do want to educate you guys on what tax refunds really are and why you really do not want them. So let's first break down the word refund. Re means again or return and fun means money. So you're getting your money back or your money is being returned back to you. So typically when you see refunds, it is because you've paid for some kind of service, you've paid for some kind of product, you've returned it, and now in return, you want your money back. Well, when it comes to tax refunds, basically all it means is that you have completely overpaid in taxes throughout the year. And now at the end of the year, you are getting all of the money that you have paid too much for or too much of back to you. So who holds this money? Of course, the government is holding the money, right? Now let's think about this. If you owe the government money, they want their money right here, right now. If you don't pay them on time, they want some kind of interest on top of that. But when they are holding your money and giving it back to you at the end of the year in the form of a tax return, you have basically given them that money interest free. They take that money, they go and lend it out to people for all kind of government loans and everything. They've made money on your money. And then at the end of the year, they have given you your money back with no interest on top of it. And because again, it's being returned to you this is money that you were supposed to have throughout the year anyway and you would have gotten it back during the year over the course of your paychecks if you would have filled out your w-4 correctly which don't worry i will be showing you how to do that later on in this video many people who get tax refunds specifically the larger refunds tend to struggle financially throughout the year and most if not all of them would fare better throughout the year if that tax refund was instead spread evenly across their paychecks just think about it if you were someone who gets let's say a six thousand dollar tax refund at the end of the year that six thousand dollars would instead be five hundred dollars a month back into your household would you be better off financially could you be in less debt possibly could you be able to take care of yourself and your children just a little bit better if you had that five hundred dollars back into your household every single month instead of six thousand dollars at the end of the year that's a question you have to ask yourself so how do we get this money back into our paychecks back into our household well it's very simple all you have to do is fill out your w-4 correctly now here's something that's very important anytime something in your household changes and it will affect you during tax time you are supposed to fill your w-4 out again there are people who have had multiple children since the last time they filled out their w-4 and because of that that is why they get these huge tax returns at the end of the year or tax refunds at the end of the year because now they have too much taxes taken taken out of their paychecks because of the number of dependents that they have. This also comes into play when you are now married or if you were married before and now you get a divorce or now instead of having one job, you have two jobs or maybe you went from two jobs to one. All of these things can change your taxes around in your paycheck and you should file your W-4 all over again. So at this point, we're gonna change the view. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to fill out your W-4 in the most efficient and effective manner. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I am not a tax preparer. I do not work in HR, but I have been very well educated on the W-4 form. If you have any questions when it comes to filling out the W-4 form, please reach out to the IRS. I personally would not reach out to your HR department because most of them honestly don't know how to fill it out either. Let's go ahead and get into this W-4 form. Now, depending on when you are 
are watching this video, this information could be a little bit outdated. Hopefully they don't completely change this form into a totally different one because let me tell you, the last couple of W4s look nothing like this one. So in this particular scenario, I'm going to give you guys a scenario where I am a single parent with two children and I'm a nurse, sorry, that's a nurse abbreviation. Now this is not my current scenario because I'm not a single parent. I don't have children at all. I am just a single person. So it's a whole lot easier for me. And we're going to say that I have two jobs, one in which I earn $35,000 a year and the other one I earn $10,000 a year. So of course in step one, you're gonna be entering your personal information. Once you get down to one C, this is where you're going to declare your filing status, whether you are single or married filing separately, married filing jointly, or if you are head of household. Now this is really important. I have seen people put head of household and they're not technically head of household and this can affect you during tax time. The only time that you check head of household, you have to read very carefully. Check only if you are unmarried and pay more than half the cost of keeping up a home for yourself and a qualifying individual. Meaning if you do not have dependents, if you are like me, I'm just a single person. I don't have any children. I don't have any dependents or anything. If I was living in a home by myself, I would not be head of household. It's not like how we qualify people as head of household. Like, oh, you pay most of the, no. Just because I pay all the bills does not mean anything. I have to have a qualifying individual in which this case, of course I do because I'm a single parent with two children but in my real scenario I would not be filing that so based on the scenario I am going to check head of household now when it comes to steps two through four you're only going to do those steps if they apply to you otherwise you're just going to skip straight to step five so let's go ahead and go through it so step two is the multiple jobs or spouse works now this means that whether I am by myself and I work multiple jobs or if I am married filing jointly and my spouse also works I'm going to do step two so with this one again I have two jobs so we are gonna do this so it says do only one of the following you can use the estimator you can use the multiple jobs worksheet which is what I'm gonna use and then if there are only two jobs total you may check this box so it just depends on which option you want and then it says a tip to be accurate submit a 2020 form w4 for all of your other jobs so not just this one that I'm filling it out to give my boss at this job I need to fill out this same w4 for my other job as well and again if your situation changes you have to make sure that you refill this form out and send that new form to both of your hr departments let's go ahead and go to the multiple jobs worksheet at this point we are on the multiple jobs worksheet the most important thing is that you go to the chart that is based on your current situation so i'm not married filing jointly i'm not a qualifying widower i'm not single or married filing separately i am actually head of household in this particular situation so on the left hand side what you're going to do is you're going to find where your higher paying job annual taxable wage and salary is remember we were at thirty five thousand dollars so we're going to be in this line here and then my second job, I earn $10,000 a year. So the number that we are going to be using is 2220. On the 2B worksheet, you want to make sure that you read the note up here. If more than one job has an annual wage of more than $120,000, which you will be able to see here because you can see that the top line doesn't go past $120,000. But of course, this is not the situation that I personally have in this scenario that I gave you. So we are going to go here where the two jobs are. If you have two jobs, or you're married filing jointly and you and your spouse each have one job, find the amount from the appropriate table, which we have already done. And remember that amount was $2,220. We do not have three jobs. So we're gonna, like this says, skip down to line three. So in line three, we're going to enter the number of pay periods per year for the highest paying job. In this particular job, I'm just gonna say that I get paid every two weeks. So that means there are 26 paydays. Step four, we have to divide the annual amount on line one or line two C, which we don't have to see by the number of pay periods on line three. So we're gonna do 2220 divided by 26 and that is going to get me 85.38 and you're just going to round to the number 85. 
five. Now it's time to move on to step three where we claim our dependents. Now, as you guys can see here, it says that you only complete steps three through four B on form W4 for only one of these jobs. So if I were you, I would just go ahead and send the form that has the dependents and everything for three to four B. I would send that to my job where I make the most money. That's just me personally. Okay, so if your income will be $200,000 or less, which it will, remember we only earn $45,000 total, 35,000 from one job, 10,000 from another. We're gonna multiply the number of qualifying children under age 17 by 2,000. Now I have two children under the age of 17, so we are going to do $4,000. Now it says multiply the number of other dependents by $500. I do not have any other dependents, but if I did, and there's a particular form on the IRS where you can go to see if someone that you think is a dependent actually is a dependent based on the IRS definitions. It's not based on your definitions, remember that. So we are not gonna put anything there. We're gonna add the amounts above and enter the total here. So we're just gonna enter $4,000. With 4A, this is going to be other income that's not from jobs at all so things like interest dividends retirement income things that do not get taxes withheld if you feel like you're going to have a substantial amount of income from that and you know that you won't have taxes withheld from that you can go ahead and put a certain amount there if you want taxes withheld from that other income if you don't absolutely fine for b is going to be for deductions that are other than standard deductions. So typically if you have some kind of small home-based business thing, you will be filling out 4B, which is here. And this is pretty self-explanatory. But if this is your first year with the home-based business, you won't know what to put on line one and all of these other things. So if I were you, I would just try to save about 20% of my other income from my small home-based business. And then once you file your taxes for that first year, you will kind of know what your itemized deductions are. And you can fill out this particular portion here. That's not something I'll get into the video because the majority of people who are watching the video probably wouldn't be filling that out to begin with. And then down here for 4C, we have extra withholding. If you just particularly want an extra amount of money withheld out of each pay period, you can always put that there. Now back on step 2B where it says we use the multiple jobs worksheet on page 3, you're going to enter the result in step 4. C, which means that the 85 number that we have here, we are actually going to enter it down here on 4C. And at this point, we're just going to sign step five and put the employer information down there. We're gonna date it and that's literally it. So the most important thing you guys is making sure that you file the correct status. Do not file head of household if you are not head of household. The second thing is making sure that if you have multiple jobs or if you are married filing jointly and your spouse works, that you make sure that you do the multiple jobs worksheet. It's very self-explanatory. And then step three, really, really important part, especially for most people watching this video because like I said earlier most people who are getting huge tax refunds are people who have multiple children so making sure that you file this part or fill this part out correctly is very very important to ensure that you are getting the right amount of taxes withheld and they are not withholding too much and making you struggle financially throughout the year so I know some people after watching this video might be like listen I like my tax refunds I like getting all of my money at once and while that may be true the question you really have to ask yourself is do you like the current financial situation that you're in the other 364 days out of the year there is a reason why car sales and electronic sales specifically like tvs and things like that those sales surge throughout tax season there is a reason for that most people do not take their tax refunds to put them back in a good financial situation they splurge they go out and buy things and it's not to say that buying things is wrong or you shouldn't do that but the fact of the matter is if you are still in debt if you are still struggling financially you definitely shouldn't be taking that money and going and spending it all frivolously and then struggling again the other 364 days out of the year until you get your tax refund money again the fact of the 
the matter is most of us suck when it comes to properly handling our money trust me <laughs> been there done that at one point in time i was over forty thousand dollars in debt i have now been 100 debt free for almost two years now you just really have to think about it like if you are completely stressed out financially throughout the year you get these huge tax returns would you rather have that money throughout the year sure you might not be able to splurge on a new car at the end of the year but did you really need that new car did you really need those new clothes are these things that you could have possibly bought throughout the year sporadically instead of buying something all at once just because you have this huge lump sum of money again most people would mishandle that amount of money anyway that is why we are where we are as a country as a people it just is what it is but you do not have to be part of that statistic any longer so if you are someone who gets a tax refund at the end of the year i highly encourage you to stop giving the government an interest-free loan because let me tell you they would not do the same for you if you've ever owed taxes get a hefty little fine and you will get a nice interest rate put on top of that fine for every single month that you do not pay them their money so do not give them your money for free stop making it harder for yourself financially the other 364 days out of the year properly fill out your w-4 and you know Know what next year around this time let me know how it worked out better for you i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys have any questions whatsoever feel free to leave them down below please thumbs up this video subscribe if you haven't already but other than that i will see you guys in the next video bye guys